This is part three of a four part series on object oriented languages. In this video, we talk about encapsulation. So encapsulation means the bundling of data with the methods that operate on and restrict direct access to it. Encapsulation is used to hide the values of internal state of an object preventing direct access by unauthorized parties. Encapsulated attributes of an object should only be accessible or changeable via the methods provided by that object. Encapsulation therefore helps keep data related to an object safe. It can't accidentally be altered by another part of the program without using the code provided in the methods, thus keeping the programmer in control. In this diagram, you can see that other instantiated objects are prevented from directly accessing or alterating the object's private attributes directly without first going through its methods. Think of these private attributes loosely, a bit like local variables. Any attempt to directly access an object's private attributes will result in an error. You must supply methods, therefore, if you want an object's internal attributes to be read or altered. As such, an object's methods are normally set to public and not private. As the methods are part of the same object as its private attributes, however, it will be able to access them. So let's have a look at this in a coded example. This line of code in the black box instantiates a new object of the person class called person1 and it initially sets its private attributes to name equals Sam and address equals Stroud. Now this line of code person1.name equals T is going to produce an error. Although there is an object called person1 and it has an attribute called name, this attribute is private. So you can't simply assign a value to it with a line of code such as that shown. Now, this line of code, person1.setNameT, this calls the person1's object's public method set name and passes in the string T. However, you can see the code for this method also checks the length of the string that's been passed in. The if statement requires the value passed in to be between 3 to 20 characters long. As we only supplied one character, the uppercase T, the if statement catches this invalid attempt to change the state of its private name attribute and outputs a friendly error message. We've used our method to protect the name attribute from an unwanted change. This final line of code will be perfectly valid. The value Tom gets passed in via the set name method. The if statement checks that the input is of an acceptable length and subsequently updates its private attribute name to Tom. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is encapsulation and how does it help to create robust programs?